Greetings citizen, and welcome to your weekly dose of this week in Star Citizen. Join me as we catch up on all the latest news and info in the wibbly wobbly world of CIG. It's been a busy week, but let's kick off with Inside Star Citizen. Chris Campbell, lead lighting artist, shows us what it's like when you turn off the lights in his bedroom. Which is nice. But then goes on to explain about how the dynamic lighting system will work in the PU, with distinct day and night cycles. Currently, and with the exception of new Babbage, all landing zones use pre-baked environment probes for their ambient lighting setup. This is pretty inefficient as lights are on during the day, when they don't need to be. In future, environment probes that can update depending on the current ambient lighting, will be used instead. The net result of all this is more natural looking lighting, and a less resource intensive environment, especially during the day. Can't wait to see the results of their updates to Lawville and Area 18. Nice work chaps. Then, in the sprint report, we get a look at some upcoming spandex. Spandex! All spandex! Followed by our first look at new Babbage's resident mission giver, Eddie Parr, who happens to be the bartender at Wallers and a huge fan of the Borg. The new high-tech hangers that we were supposed to be getting for 3.9 have finally made an appearance, and they look pretty sweet it must be said. We then get another update on progress for the upcoming Home Depot that we'll be getting. And again, I have to say, these look really good, and I'm very much looking forward to shopping there. I wonder if they do loyalty cards. It's more eye candy next with another look at some of the more advanced gas clouds we can expect to see in the near future. Before finishing up with a preview of some improvements to the height mapping tech used in Planet Tech version 4. Again, these look great. Nice work team. Some very juicy infos here. In this week's Star Citizen Live, Jared introduces us to the insanely talented Mr. Pedro Camacho, the artist and composer behind the stunning music you'll find throughout the verse. I think it would be fair to say that traveling around in the verse would have nowhere near the impact it does without this man's input, and his music is one of the most outstanding features of this whole project. In fact, hold on a second. Let's get rid of that and have a little more of this. Also, Lord Disco Beard gets extra bonus points this week for wearing a Whataburger t-shirt. Well played sir, well played. Anyway, Pedro talks us through his process, and where he gets his inspiration from, when it comes to composing original pieces for Star Citizen. New Babbage for instance, is a contrast to the other landing zones and portrays a feeling of safety and happiness, as well as the melody being played near the bridge of the violin to help emphasize the cold, brutal climate of Microtech. It's a fascinating episode, and if you love the music of Star Citizen, you'll love this episode of SCL. CIG are very lucky to have this very clever man working on their music. Go check it out, link in the description below. Next up, let's cast an eyeball over the roadmap roundup as there's actually stuff in it this week. As you may already be aware, 4.0 and 4.1 have been renamed 3.10 and 3.11 respectively. Personally, I was hoping for Dave and Janet. Hey ho. The NPC scheduler has been removed from the roadmap due to an ever-changing set of requirements and goals. Such is Star Citizen development. It'll perhaps return once they figure out what they want it to do. Shield system tech replacement has also been removed as the VFX team don't have the bandwidth to complete the required tasks on time. At least they are honest. 
realistic weapon handling, is also suffering from the dreaded scope creep, and has been temporarily removed as well. Ocean Shader Tech however, has been added to the 3.10 column, and moved straight to polishing. Basically this means better looking wet stuff all round. I'll take it. Then the following items have had their images updated, and FPS cover usage and weapon types have been moved to polishing. And that's it for the roadmap roundup. Star Citizen Monthly Report for April 2020. Okay, so this is a hefty one, but instead of going through every single thing, we'll just look at the big ticket items or we'll be here all day. In AI, Bartender's got some more work including the integration of more functionalities into consumable objects, to create an additional layer of customization to the flow, such as enabling AI to differentiate between open and closed bottles and act accordingly. Sweet. Because if my bartender gives me an empty bottle, I'm going to shoot him in the face. The art environment team have been busy beavering away on assets for the pyro system, which is fucking great news. They are currently creating new geology and vegetation packs, and putting them together on the new planets. Look out for an unstable star, hostile landscapes, and dangerous plant life when it launches. I'm utterly giddy with excitement for Pyro, and can't wait to see how they realize it. And judging by some of these sneak peek images, it's going to be epic. Great work ladies and gents, great work. The UK art department have almost finished the exterior grey box for the Crusader Hercules. And the US team have kicked off the cockpit grey box for the Mercury Star Runner, while improvements to the Origin M50 have entered the polishing phase, and the prisoner pods for the Cutlass Blue have been tweaked after some feedback. Good stuff. The backend services boffins have been dealing with a memory leak, along with a variety of other bugs, but work started on the dynamic mission service. Glorious, this is good news. Support for Theatres of War was also provided along with some work on the iCache. More good stuff. Engineering did a whole bunch of stuff. Most of which is pretty technical. All I can say is it looks like they have been extremely busy doing important engineering stuff. And that's not to belittle what these guys do. What they do is quite clearly vital, it's just that it's mostly utterly incomprehensible. Anyway, good work engineering team. The vehicle features team continue to rebuild out the new HUD using the new building blocks tech, along with improvements to the IFCS which will cause your ship to become more and more difficult to control if thruster components become damaged. Even more good stuff. They also managed to throw in some progress on the docking mechanics as well. What are you doing? Docking. It's not possible. No. It's necessary. It sounds like they have figured out how to get the physics grids to play nicely once they are docked together. This one little sentence right here, has got me sporting a minor space boner thinking about the possibility of having my very own healthy in game by Christmas. Top job guys. The graphics team continued their work on the Vulcan renderer, and the organic shader got an upgrade, to integrate it better with Planet Tech V4, while managing to complete the new real time environment probe feature at the same time. Fucking top banana chaps. Top banana. It looks like the lighting team will be deploying some of that sweet sweet dynamic day night lighting to Lawville next, which will no doubt liven the place up no end. We may also see these new improvements rolled out to planetary outposts as well. Cool beans. These new images look pretty awesome. Nice work guys. System Design started implementing the new refining station kiosks, which will be used by players to convert their raw materials into refined goods, that can be sold for higher prices, and in the future used to craft items. Hold the phone, this is great news. When live, players will have to take their mixed materials to a station with refining capabilities, and then start a refining job. Based on the type of refining process, the materials they want to refine or discard, and how busy the refinery is, the player will pay a price and the job will begin. Refining will then run, even if the player is not present in the station or logged on. Once finished, the player will receive a notification, and will be able to return to the station to collect their goods. Nice one. 
so I'm guessing if you're in, say, a prospector, you'll just be able to keep popping off, filling up with ore, and dumping it in the refinery while they work on your last load. Sounds good to me. The Vehicle Tech Team incorporated a super secret new in-game system that will be revealed at an upcoming event. Okay. So either the Origin 100 or X series released straight to flyable with ship and ship spawning as the new feature. 890 jump owners will be pleased. Except they won't, cause they still won't have their correct cargo grid, because fuck you 890 owners. And finally, the VFX team began work on the upcoming Atscad sniper rifle and Ubera pistol. They also further developed the fire propagation system, where fire will now spread, based on material parameters such as oxygen level and surface type. It will also react to wind, meaning it may spread quicker, and will be able to be put out with a fire extinguisher. Which is good news really, because if a fire were to break out on Hurston right now, with the category 12 hurricanes they are currently experiencing, the whole planet would be a barbecue in a matter of minutes. Link to this month's report in the description below. And finally for this week, Always Pig put together a new player guide for new citizens joining the verse. Link in the description below. I've never done a guide before, so let me know what you think, and what other guides you'd like to see, if any, except Pew Pew. I'm fucking useless at Pew Pew. As always, thanks for watching. Now, commence like button slapping and subscribing. Do it now.